I think I just figured out why the US, UK and France are so adamantly pro-Israel right now. Like we all knew it had to do with money, but I'm gonna tell you exactly how. There's a shout out to my uncle who told me to do some research on the Ben Gurion Canal, and I did, and I took notes. Now, who is Ben Gurion? He is known as the founding father of Israel. He was the first prime minister, yes, you guessed it, in 1948. And this canal is a proposal to connect the Red Sea to the Mediterranean Sea through here, right? But we already have a connection, and it's called the Suez Canal. And if you don't know the history, let's get into it. The Suez Canal was opened in 1869, and the Suez Canal Company was given a 99-year lease to own the Suez Canal. And guess who owned the Suez Canal Company? The French and the British. I think it's also important to note that the British Empire originally was opposed to building the canal because they thought it would directly threaten their economy, but instead they just decided let's benefit from it, bought 44% of the shares in 1875, so they were all good. Now in 1888, the maritime powers, Great Britain, Germany, Austria, Hungary, Spain, France, Italy, the Netherlands, Russia, and Turkey signed this thing called the Convention of Constantinople. What's important about this is it said that every single nation should be able to use the canal, whether at war, at peace, it cannot be denied access to anyone. In 1949, Egypt denied Israel access after the Nakba, after they did what they did. That was a huge deal, it was a big statement because of this. Now in 1956, when the US was basically having a proxy war with the Soviet Union in that region, the Egyptian president at the time, Gamal Abdel Nasser, decided to nationalize the Suez Canal, so take it away from the British and French-owned company, essentially because the U.S. Um, reneged on a previous agreement to finance the Aswan Dam project that was for the Nile, getting water and electricity to the Egyptian population, etc., etc. This was a massive shift, a huge move in the region and globally probably why it was also used as a battleground in the 1967 Arab-Israeli War. Now, after the Arab-Israeli War and the Geneva Conference, etc., etc., what you need to know is Israel and Egypt signed a peace treaty at Camp David, signed by Jimmy Carter. This is from a U.S. government website, by the way. My sources are checked, tried, and trusted. And the U.S. was given credit for orchestrating a peace treaty between these two countries. Again, why were they involved from the beginning? Who knows? The U.S. has always been here. We're in 1979 now. Should all be cool. A peace treaty was signed. Like, everything is perfect. Suez Canal is open to everyone. Cool, cool, great, right? Wrong. 16 years before this, and even before the Arab-Israeli War, the U.S. Department of Energy and the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory had been making a plan for something else. In 1963, they made a classified plan to help excavate the Negev Desert Hills with 520 nuclear bombs to help create a canal. This was only made public in 1993, 1994, depending on the sources you check. So at the time of the peace treaty, nobody knew this was going on, except of course, Jimmy Carter. Now we could also talk about how the war was a product of collusion between Britain, France and Israel, and they decided to initiate the war, but we'll save that for another time. You might be asking yourself, why do they want to build another canal? Like we have the Suez Canal right here. Why do we need a canal through here? <sighs> this is where the money comes in, baby. Without the Suez Canal right here, ships from Asia would have to go all the way down and around Africa in order to reach Europe. This canal right here currently sees the passage of 12 to 15%, depending on the source you check, of the world's trade and 10% of the global oil distribution. Just this little canal right here. Now who benefits from this? Egypt, of course, it's their canal, right? In 2023, they broke records and made a revenue of 9.4 billion US dollars. Yay for Egypt, right? Well, how do you think the US, the UK, France, and Israel feel about that? Not good. The Suez Canal was not ideal. Up until 2014, you could only go one way, which meant for six hours it went in one direction and six hours it went in the other, which was super not efficient. It was also not wide enough to accommodate some of the largest ships in the world. So what happened in 2021? You might remember this. One of the world's biggest ships jammed the Suez Canal, leading to approximately $900 million of losses. The US was really not happy about this and the Pentagon released a statement that this made it difficult for the movement of their military vessels, um, specifically to Israel, but not to worry, they had other ways. Now, when they're planning the Ben Gurion Canal, they're planning to have it 50 meters deep, which is 10 meters deeper than the Suez Canal, and 200 meters wide, which will facilitate 
the biggest ships in the world going in both directions. Not only that, but directly competing with the Suez Canal, Israel projects that it would make them an annual revenue of about $6 billion a year plus. And now for the interesting part. There's one feature about the Suez Canal that's also really inconvenient, and that's the fact that it's built on pretty sandy shores. Now, I'm not an engineer. Now, from what I read, sandy shores are pretty inconvenient for a canal. They constantly need maintenance. But where Israel wants to dish it out to the Mediterranean Sea, it's a rocky land texture, which is ideal for these conditions. Let's zoom into this. That's the Gaza Strip. How annoying is the placement of the Gaza Strip for them? They have to actually turn the canal around so that it avoids this piece of land. Do you see where I'm getting at? They don't want ships to have to do this entire round and add a little time and inconvenience to their journey and have such close proximity to Gaza. What if they just built it through Gaza? Oh no wait, they don't want to do that. They don't want to help the Palestinian economy. What do you mean? That would defeat the entire purpose, wouldn't it? Unless they took that land. Yeah, that's what's going on. Israel wants to seize Gaza, annex the land, take it over so they can build their canal through it. And the US, the UK and France are all for that because it's going to make them a lot of money at the cost of millions of lives destroyed. I'm freaking believable. Building this canal will not only redirect trade, but historically, Arab states used the Suez Canal to put pressure on Israel. So it will not only increase Israel's geopolitical standing, but it'll also become a strategic asset for diplomatic negotiations for Israel and take away the most powerful thing the Arab states had against the US, UK, France, and Israel to keep them in line. And there you have it. That's the reason.